Howdy, folks. Welcome back to Reading Held Hostage. My name's Blue, and I love to read. And my name's Justin, and I hate to read. And today it's happening. We have finally finished New Moon, and we're starting Eclipse. This is our 18th episode, and Eclipse is a... Oh. Oh, I'm getting a call. Really? Right now? Yeah, sorry. Well... Hello? Oh, yeah, this is... You got him. Really? You're the... You're Robert Pattinson's (laughs) manager? Justin, now's not a good time. No, no, like... Yeah, it wasn't actually him. It was... Babe. No, no, no. It was... It was. I was doing a... Hey, whoever that is, we have a podcast to record. No, I was doing an accent, yeah. I have a significant amount of notes. His grandma said that was the best accent. Like, it sounded more like him than he does. We literally have 14 pages of notes to get through. This is going to be like two hours if you stay on the phone. He really wants to come on the show? Oh, he can't make it. can't make the drive. He's busy. Probably doesn't have a bowl, though. Living in a different lighthouse now. Babe, I... For really? Lighthouse 2. Okay. You don't want me to say that on the podcast. Okay. Too little, okay. too late. I'm not editing this out. Why am I re- repeating everything you're saying in a form of a question? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Babe. <clears throat> Justin, I'm serious. I'm going to take away your nightly vegetables okay. if you don't hang up. He said I could be Batman. He wants me to be Batman because I did such a good impression. Okay, yeah. I'll um, yeah, I'll talk to you later about it. We're doing a podcast right now. No, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's going to serve as like a cold open or something. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Love you. Bye. Love you. Who was what? that on the other? Who do you love on the other side of the phone? What? Because I'm right here and I'm your I'm your wife. That was Robert Pattinson's manager. And you love Robert Pattinson's manager? He said it first, so I was like... You just got to go with the yeah. flow. <sighs> Anyways. Sorry for... Oh my god, did you hear both of my shoulders crack? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you could hear that. Ugh. Oh. Welcome back to Reading Held Hostage. We're starting Eclipse today, and despite Justin's egregious interruption, we have a significant amount to get through today because uh, we're not doing two-parters this week, or this month. We're going to see if the longer episodes go better than the two-parters, because... Well, we're not doing super long episodes. I don't I have, four, I have double the amount of pages. I'm stopping us at an hour 15. Babe, you literally can't, or we're going to have to do two-parters. What do you mean, two-parters? Because we have, I have 14 pages of notes for the first seven chapters of Eclipse. Yeah, we'll just keep doing more episodes of it. I wouldn't want to listen to a book over a month and a half. One book? Yeah, but we're so fucking funny that people will just, like, get in line to listen to it on the only iPod available. Yeah, there's only one iPod Nano left. Yes, and everybody (laughs) has to use it. That's actually the next book we're going to read. It's like Hunger Games, but only there's one iPod Nano left. It's like Hunger Games, but there's there's all all the food, but one iPod Nano. Yeah, everything else is fine. Everything is normal. It's called iPod Games. (laughs) (laughs) They all fight to see who gets to use the iPod. Yeah. And the games are actually called the Nano Games. That's a way better name than iPod. The games. Nanoing is the <laughs> yeah. way the, how they select yeah. the people who get to fight. Okay. For the- <laughs> anyways, like I said, I have 14 pages of notes. We have to go. Okay. So I'm not gonna for Eclipse say the whole bit about the missing and murdered Indigenous women, but please go down to our bio and check out the two links we have to learn a little bit more about that, as well as the Burke Museum to learn a little bit more about the Quileute tribe. Um. Since this is the first episode of a new book, follow us on Twitter at Reading Hostage. We're on YouTube, anywhere you can listen to a podcast. Ring that freaking bell. Smash that freaking like button, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, leave us a review because we're so cute and funny. Um, zero or five stars, and we super appreciate it. And leave us five stars because we're just so freaking hot. Not like Edward hot, but yeah, I guess. Yeah, like Edward's like here and we're way above him we're really not that far above him no we're like super i am way hotter than edward and that's why you should leave us five stars anyways if you haven't listened to our past episodes for the first twilight twilight book 
And then what's the other one? New Moon. You're weird as fuck. Go listen to those first because who starts in the four- third book of the series? Okay, Blue has a big problem with. You're gonna tell me somebody's gonna start on Eclipse and be like, "This is normal. This so, is the normal starting point." So we watched, um, we watched Attack on Titan a couple times because like new seasons kept coming out. You gotta start from the beginning. And Blue says we have to start from the beginning. And I'm like, the first fucking episodes of uh, Attack on Titan are boring as hell. Yeah, there's a reason. I've read, like, the first book of most series probably, like, three or four times. And I'm just like, we can skip to the fourth or fifth episode. No. And not be so freaking bored. Not allowed. Don't make no sense. Anyways, that's all to but, say. Go uh, listen to our Yeah, no one would Twilight skip our episodes because we're so very good. And we're not and boring. Hunk- you can skip Warrior Cats. You will not hurt my feelings. Strong and hot. You're pretty strong, yeah. Are you ready to get started? Yeah. Can you give me a quick recap of what happened in the last two books? They really vamped it up, baby. Can you be a little bit more spe- Like they, any of the characters' names? Yeah, they drove a Volvo around. Who's they? The vampies. You know their names. The little vamp. Vamp babies. You know the names. Say the names. Edward. Yeah. And? Carlisle. And? Alice. Okay. And the main character's name is? Casper? Bella. Oh, no. I was I was thinking of more. Of Jasper. A, okay. Okay. You're de- fucking dead. How friendly of a ghost is he? <sighs> Not actually that friendly. <laughs> um, There's some gross-ass Robert Frost quote to begin i'm not gonna read it because it was long and we start with everybody's favorite the prologue robert by frost. the way did i mention there are 27 chapters in this one robert frost more like robert frozen okay more like robert pattinson got him fuck yeah brother um the prologue starts with everything that has happened has been in vain They are preparing to defend her, and she's not sure if she'll ever see the outcome of this fight. And somewhere in the distance, a wolf howls. So imagine all that stuff I just said, Justin, but to the song I played you earlier. So that's how, that's what they do. On all levels but physical, I am a wolf. (laughs) That's Jacob. (laughs) Okay. Oh, uh, what? Well, I wonder what that guy's up to. And then chapter one. This I'm sorry that really, that wolf. That wolf. Yeah, use your pronouns. This is really long, so we have to get going. We start with a handwritten note from. Jim. All right, guys. Not gonna be a lot of funnies in this episode. No we fucking get- funnies, Justin. I can't believe you just fucking ruined this. <laughs> Literally, dude. <laughs> No funnies in this one. Just no book. funnies allowed. J- only book must exist. <laughs> well, I really want to talk about Rosalie. We start with a handwritten note from Jake with almost all of it crossed out. Some of it's like blaming her, mad that she's passing notes um, between Charlie and Billy. They can't be friends, uh, but it just ends up being like, I miss you too, but we can't be friends. And Bella's just devastated. Too thick. Who's too thick? Too thick to be friends. Edward, he's huge now. No, Jacob. Bella's devastated by this note. She just wants to be friends with Jacob again, but they can't. As she's reading this note, she can tell Charlie's cooking and she runs downstairs to help him. You know how um, Charlie, a full-grown adult man who's lived by himself for 20 years, can't cook? (laughs) And is so incompetent that he puts a a metal lid of spaghetti sauce into the microwave. How has he not burned his house down if this is... Bella's like, oh my god, Charlie, you had to take the lid off, you silly goose. And also, like, you didn't stir the noodles, so they're just, like, burning to the bottom and they're a mushy hunk of burning noodle. And I'm like, I wrote, what the fuck is this for? Like, relatableness? Most people's parents will cook. Yeah, this is as bad as, like, my my college dorm first year. Yeah, where the people keep... It's like, he's not a fucking toddler. It's like, well, how many times are we going to burn popcorn? How many times are a college freshman going to burn popcorn so bad that the fire truck needs to come? Yeah. Also, I don't think it's relatable for lots of people to have incompetent parents. Like, a lot of them, but, like, not a yeah. lot. Anyways, Bella's like, whoa, why are you cooking? Um, oh, I know why. I know why it's weird. Hmm. It's a woman's job. That's true, because she does finish up dinner. Um, she is uncomfortable because she knows Charlie's going to have like some sort of co- talk with her, and he doesn't cook for just shits and giggles. And Bella glances at the clock because... <laughs> he doesn't cook to eat. He just doesn't cook. Yeah. It's so, literally so annoying. Um, 
She glances at the clock because afternoons are so hard for her. She's grounded since Jacob brought that motorcycle down. And because she's grounded, she can't spend time with Edward unless it's between the hours of 7 and 9.30, even though she sees Edward at school at all time, and then he sneaks into her room every single night and watches her sleep. So there's literally like four hours she doesn't see him, and she's fucking devastated. So they can't spend 24 hours together? I don't... I- I, I literally am so mad at these first couple of chapters. That's why there's so many notes. I got so fucking mad. Hey, Blue, I love you. I don't want to spend 24 hours with you. No, literally, I, I get home from work. I'm like, don't look at me for a minute. Yeah. Like, give me like 35 to an hour. Let me watch an episode of my program. And then we can talk. Yeah, because I'm just so hot. She's like, oh. That's not really what I yeah, said. She's like, oh, you know, it's just, oh, you're too hot. I can't even you register. You have such an interesting way of viewing things. So she gets out of her head. Charlie's reading the news and she's like, stop it. You hate reading the news. And he's like, Seattle's making a lot of news. There's five unsolved homicides in the last two weeks, which is insane. That's a huge amount of homicides in the last two weeks. Um, Hint, hint, foreshadowing much. Do you think it's a moidor? I think it's a fucking vampire. Oh, damn. Dumbass. (laughs) They eat in silence for a bit, and then, like, they're each reading their individual things. Bella's, of course, reading Withering Heights. Ugh. And then, finally, Charlie puts down his newspaper. He's like, I want to talk. It's about Jacob and Edward. And that's how I imagine he talks. And her grounding. He says, I want to give you parole for good behavior, but only conditionally. I will lift the grounding if you take some time to spend other, like, spend time with somebody who's not fucking Edward. Like, he's like, I need you to stop talking to Edward. For like two single seconds and yeah. spend time with another human being. Yeah. She's like, have you, he's like, have you spoken to Angela? And she's like, yeah, at school. He's like, outside of school. She's like, dad, I'm grounded. And he's like, okay, this is what I'm talking about. You do not need to dump all your friends for your boyfriend. It's nice to keep life balanced to have other people in it. And like, he comments that if there was something else in her life other than Edward, then the previous fall when she became so depressed might not have been as bad. Which I'm yeah. like, pretty, pretty valid point. Like if you had any other friends. If you literally did one other thing. Yeah. One single other thing. Does she get into skating? Like, just hella kickflips? Yeah, totally. She just grinds the shit That's actually, out of- I was talking to my friends at work. They were like, I don't remember what happened to Eclipse. And I didn't have the guts to tell them that Eclipse is just a skate ballad. Yeah. It's Tony Hawk's whole story. But from the perspective of Bella. It's just like Bella goes to school one day. And it's like, hey, Bella, it's me, Tony Hawk. Yeah. And that's what happens in Eclipse. Yeah. So sorry, spoilies. Justin, remember, keep yeah, the spoilies. She dumps, dumps Edward and Jacob. And it's just like, skate's my life now, dude. <laughs> I gotta be bored in. See you later, skaters. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Correct. Um, he requests that her freedom is used to spend time with other people, especially Jacob. She's like, spending time with Jacob is a lot more com- complicated than you know. Friendship o- doesn't always seem to be enough for Jacob. And he jokes like, isn't Edward up for a little competition? And I was like, oh, you were doing so good. Yeah. Don't Until then. Like... It, it, oh, She's not something to fight over, one. Yep, not property. And she's, like, having other issues besides that with Jacob, but that's one. So Also, it seems like Jacob doesn't want to hang out with her. Well, Jacob can't because of the vampire stuff. Yeah. But yes. So Charlie's like, you're hurting Jacob's feelings. And she's like, how did this even come up? Like, And Charlie's like, I maybe have gabbed with Billy about it. (laughs) Charlie and Billy are literally, like, gabbing about their kids. It's so cute. He's like, also, like, there's a little bit of mail by the stove. It's a letter from University of uh, it's Alaska two Southeast. Hunks, two males by the stove. Ugh. Two gigantic Ugh, men have been by the hunks. stove. So when I was painting that word picture for you, I'm sure the listeners maybe didn't get the view of two gigantic men. Yeah, just sitting by the stove. Yeah, just vibing. Buck ass. No, they have a speed on one. It's tasteful. Yeah, it's Mormon tasteful. She's Mormon like Mormon tasteful <laughs> overalls. <laughs> overalls and a button down jack uh cover underneath it yep um she can see that this letter is open which is a federal crime charlie Uh and it basically it says she got accepted um to university of alaska and charlie's like i've got some money for tuition she's like shut the fuck up i'll pay by myself and he's like yeah what are edward's plans for next year trying to be sly 
Um, but before they can talk, Edward's at the door, and wow, is he hot as fuck. Oh, God, he's hot. I wrote, gross talk about Be- for Bella on how hot Edward is. I ignored it. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie's just like, damn. Damn, that kid is hot. Look at that dude. Edward has a bunch of paper applications for them all, and for him and Bella to fill out. Charlie's like, hey, have you been accepted anywhere, Edward? And Edward's like, yeah, Syracuse, uh, Harvard, Dartmouth, and Alaska Southeast. Edward is excited to hear that Bella's no longer grounded with these conditions, of course. And um, they talk about college. Edward's like, Bella, I want you to apply to Dartmouth. I would pay. And she's like, literally, no. Like, we've both been accepted to Alaska. We're fine. What's Dartmouth? I meant Dartmouth. (laughs) Are you being mean to me? No, I, I actually don't know that school, but yeah. I knew it was not pronounced It's Dartmouth. one of the big schools. Uh, don't be mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, She doesn't want to, so she throws the application away. Edward does it anyways, and he's like, oh, I sign your name better than you do at this point. That's a crime. Also, like, Bella said no, bitch. She said no. Wait, wait. She's a woman. You're right. Women can't say yeah, no. Yeah. So Edward wants Bella to go to college because maybe after doing some human experiences, um, she's like, she won't want to change. But she's like, it doesn't matter. Going to college will just be an alibi anyways. This pisses me off because Bella is so eager and ready to leave her dad, her ma, her friend, and everybody within six months to pretend she is dead, which is like so annoying. I just can't even imagine. And it, she's just so selfish, honestly. Yeah, she's just like, mm, actually, I'll be fine. fuck everybody. They talk about mora- morality, and she jokes that she wants to be a monster, too. And Edward's like, being a monster is not that funny. Look at the newspaper. Do you see the Seattle situation? Monsters are not a joke. And she's like, what? What's going on in Seattle? He's like, a vampire is killing somebody in Seattle. It's a new board. We've been monitoring, monitoring the situation for weeks. Of course, not telling Bella fucking one single thing about it. Okay, if they're monitoring the situation, why don't they just go fucking kill it? Because somebody should have created the newborn and should be watching it, and they don't know who that is yet. Yeah, but also, uh, 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 nobody else cares about not murdering people but them in one other group. Yeah, but it's not, they're, they're not enforcers. They should be. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, They end up talking about Jacob, and Edward points out to her that she's done nothing wrong, which is true, but still. Uh, She has, like, a feel that she needs to fix it. And um, either way, they're like, what are we going to do? He's like, we need to get you to a bookstore. You can't read Wuthering Heights. She talks about it. Anyway, (laughs) I fucking hate Wuthering Heights. (laughs) Get a new good book. It's literally just a metaphor for the relationship. I don't even want to go into it. She then tells him that she needs to see Jacob, and he says no. Mm. No. She's like, nothing will happen to me. And he's like, werewolves are unstable. Um, I was here the last time around when they started changing. Like, we what thought- if they wolfy out? What if they wolf out on you, bruh? They thought the line had died with F from Be- Black, um, but it didn't. And Bella's like, what do you mean die? Like, the werewolves came back because you guys came back. Like, the vampire set them off. And Edward, like, kind of doesn't believe a word she's saying. He's like, huh, Carlisle will be interested in that theory. Like, it's not a fucking theory. Jacob, one of the werewolves, told Bella that. Like, that's the situation. Oh, wait, wait, wait. She's a woman. Pretty much because he won't let her see Jacob. And she's like, I'm going anyways. And he's like, well, I'll have to stop you. Cool. Cool move. Super healthy. Y'all, if you're in a relationship where your partner does that to you, not, not, no. No Knock bueno. it off. Stop. Not healthy. So Bella's happy because she's free. She's at school. She's at lunch with the Cullens and her friend Angela and Angela's boyfriend, Ben. And Angela's complaining about how she has all these graduation announcements to address. And Bella's like, hey, I'm no longer grounded. Like, I can come over and help you with those. And I'll... Uh, like, Angela's like, oh, my God, thank you so much. And Alice is like, yay, what are we going to do, like, to celebrate? And everyone's like, she's like, I don't think we need to do something that big, considering Alice goes fucking ape shit when she plans something. Yeah. Bella's drifting off, thinking of Jacob. She's like, I feel incomplete. And then she's like, here's. Oh, that's what she's doing. She's getting into drifting. 
Yeah, she's drifting, bruh. In her, in Tokyo her, in her truck. Yeah, Tokyo drifted truck. Pretty sure her truck's a 1968. You um, could drift a truck. You could drift a truck. You wouldn't drift a truck. You wouldn't drift a download truck. <laughs> you wouldn't drift a downloaded truck. Um, she can hear Angela going, Alice, Alice, are you okay? Alice has, like, stared off to space and is clearly having a vision. But Edward passes it off. And they keep talking, and Bella knows, like, Edward's going to tell her eventually. Sorry, she's mentally ill. <laughs> he literally. They head home in Edward's absolutely delicious Volvo. Oh, yeah. I know, you back, were worried it wasn't going to come back. Alice starts to talk about how Edward is not really that good at doing something. Maybe Rose can help. She, they're just talking, talking, talking. And then she go, Ed, Alice goes, also, I want my yellow Porsche. Like the one she stole in Italy. Uh, Bella can tell that Edward is ignoring her questions about Alice's vision, which is super good when your partner just fucking ignores you. Yeah. Super awesome. Just like, mm, don't want to talk to you, actually. Mm, nope. Edward drops Alice off at home and then takes Bella back and they don't talk the whole time, which would make me uncomfortable in silence, but that would make me a little uncomfortable, especially like the knowledge that something is needing to be discussed. You also know this hoe is not playing any tunes in that Volvo. You gotta listen to that engine humming. (laughs) No, no, you can't hear that engine. Why not? Because it's a Volvo. You can hear it. The engines they got in Volvos, they go vroom vroom. (laughs) They get home and Edward goes right to her bedroom, which is inappropriate since the grounding was just lifted. They do gross kissy thing and it's really gross. And he's really cold. Cool description. I can't go into it. It makes me really uncomfortable. And he's so cold, she shivers, which, like, again, how uncomfortable would that be to kiss somebody and they're just fucking freezing cold? More like shiver me timbers. Shiver me timbers. Then he gets mad at her for kissing him too much, but she refuses to apologize. And I wrote rightfully so, because he's a big kid and he can handle himself. Yeah. Yeah. She sends her ma an email and jokes that her ma is so daft and she knows she could have taken her mother much, taken care of her mother much better than her husband Phil could, which is not true. But that sometimes they just have to let them grow up and go their own way to let them live their own life. And again, I'm like, who is this? Go your own way. Who is this relatable to? You know, people who have, I don't know, super duper old parents that can't take care of themselves anymore. But Renee is young. Yeah, but it's like, she's dumb. I just don't get it. And a woman? Maybe it's like just supposed to be like a very exaggerated, like, ugh, parents, am I right? Also, I made a couple of uh, she's a woman jokes so far. They're jokes. (laughs) No, Justin's actually a massive misogynist. (laughs) No, please. He doesn't believe women should do anything. Please. Which is why I'm the one working right now. Don't cancel me. He (laughs) doesn't. Um... Where, where was I? Edward brings up the stereo that Bella ripped out of the, her truck during her last birthday. And he's like, oh, crap, we're going to have to get you a new one before Emmett sees. And then he's like fanning himself. He's like, oh, did you know these were about to expire? And they're the tickets that Esme and Carlisle gave her last year to visit her mom. He's like, this might be a great, great way to celebrate your freedom. We should go this weekend. That'd be great. Charlie can't keep you here. Like, you're an adult. And then he's like, no, we should go this weekend. She's kind of like, I don't really want to argue with Charlie. Like, we, j- I just got ungrounded. Like, it's kind of quick to go right now. Yeah. He's like, come on. Like, I'm, he's like aggressive. He's like, I want to go this weekend. I'm also tired of being in the house. And then she's kind of like, is this about the vision Alice saw? He's like, oh my God, you noticed that? And he's like, oh my God, you noticed that vision? You noticed, you noticed that she blacked out for 10 minutes while <laughs> talking to us? So crazy. He's like, no, that was something about Jasper in the Southwest near his former family. And she's just anxious about him. So Charlie gets home and they start talking. And Charlie's like, oh, work was so lazy. Like, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, also Billy invited us to have a visit with the Clear Waters and the Yulies. Um, kind of a playoff party. And then, you know, Bella's just cleaning dishes, doing lady stuff. And because Bella doesn't want to mention it, Edward inappropriately brings up the tickets without her permission to her father. Cool. So he's like, hey, did Bella ever tell you that we got tickets to go see Renee in Florida? Um, She, like, drops the dish she was cleaning. She's so surprised. 
And Charlie's like pissed that ever Edward even wants that and declare declared she's not going anywhere with him, which is like TBH. Bella didn't even ask. Yeah. She literally doesn't speak this whole time. He cool. <laughs> he pulls the my house, my rules, and then she pulls the well then I'll move out. And cool. She's like, you wouldn't be mad if it was Alice or Angela. And he's like, yeah, they're girls. And she's like, you also wouldn't be mad if it was Jacob. Which is Yeah, they're girls. <laughs> Jacob's just one of the girls. as the six foot seven girl. He's just girling around. They, girl group. Girl group. They fight for a bit. And then she decides to head out for a bit because she's mad at Edward. And he's like, the reason I brought that up is because you were too much of a coward to deal with Charlie. So I interceded on your behalf. Cool. Which is like, fuck you. Uh, cool. Fuck you. She wonders if the sudden urge to go to Florida has something to do with the party at Billy Place. He's like, no, but he's grumpy. They go over to the Cullens. And then when they come home, Charlie wants to speak with her. She's like, what did you do? She's like, we played chess, which would be the lamest fucking oh thing God. to tell somebody. Like, make up a lie, Bella. Like, what the fuck? Like, I love playing chess. I've played it before, been there, done that. We were playing COD Zombies. And, like, we got lit, smoked that kind <laughs> kush, and played uh, COD Zombies for fucking six hours straight. <laughs> But she notes in her head that it's funny to watch Alice and Edward play chess because Edward reads Alice's mind and Alice predicts all the moves. And then in like three minutes after just staring at each other and moving like one piece each, one of them will like knock the king over and give up, which I think that would be pretty funny to watch. Charlie then decides there's something he needs to say and he is not good at it. He's like, you and Edward seem pretty serious. While you're an adult, you're still young. Uh, there are important things to note when you are physically involved with somebody. Is this a sex talk that's way too fucking late? And Bella realizes what is happening. It's a sex talk. No, oh, no, 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 no. He's like, Bella, please, I'm just as embarrassed as you to be giving this. And Bella's like, please, no, mom already did this 10 years ago. They're both extremely embarrassed, which I, I don't know, just so like human and cute, you know? Yeah. And then... She realizes that Edward knew this was going to happen, and that's why he was, like, kind of being a smug little asshole in the car. But Charlie... Charlie? <laughs> Hello, it's me, Charlie Hey, Daniels. it's me, Charlie. Charlie just asks and just says, please tell me you're being responsible. And she's like, please don't worry, it's not like that. And he's like, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin. Can I leave? And he has, like, one last thing to say. He's like, oh, got that off my chest. How's the balance thing going? She's like, okay, well, I guess I I would not want to continue a conversation with my father after he tried to have a sex talk with me, and I had to tell him I was a virgin. Yeah. Just putting that out into the universe. Also, uh, do you think condoms would A condom? Because, like, he got rock dick, don't he? Bro, it would be cold. Oh, no. Ice bonger. Okay, we can't talk about that. He wants to know how the balance thing is going. She has plans with Angela, and he's like, can you please talk to Jacob? She's like, I could probably go see Jacob now. And she, like, heads out. Charlie's like, hey, no problem, even though it's after curfew. But by the time she gets out to the car, she realizes it won't start. And as she realizes it, she realizes it won't start, she realizes she's not alone. And Edward is there in the car with her with, like, a piece of her car. He busted her car up on purpose because Alice called and told him that something was wrong because Bella disappeared from her view. She's mad at him, and he's right, like rightfully so. She's mad at him, like, yeah. so fucking controlling. And he's like, "I understand if you're mad at me. Like, please just shut the windows if you don't want me to come in." And she goes back into her room and closes her window, and then she opens it. And I'm like, "Bitch." It's okay to not want to see him for one single second and to be mad at him. Wait, you don't want to hang out with me 24-7? We literally discussed how I don't want to do that. But I thought you wanted me to, like, sneak into your work and hide, hang out with you while you were working. Oh, my God. Edward and would so do that. we put the chair in the bathroom so I could be with you while you're in the bathroom. <sighs> literally. It's just, like... It's okay to not want to see somebody for a little bit to take time to cool off. Like, yeah. that is fine. It's hey, I'm going to chill for 20 minutes. <laughs> Even taking more time than that wouldn't hurt. Yeah. 
Chapter three starts with them getting home from Florida. Steph didn't give Renee any time. <laughs> she, um, Bella's really glad to be back home. Um, her mom's much more perceptive than Charlie. And she began. Because woman. Because woman. She began to watch Edward and Bella, like, interact. And on the last day, they went for a walk. And Renee's like, Bella, I'm worried about you two. You're a lot more serious than I thought. And Bella was like, son of a bitch, we didn't even touch or anything while we were down here. And Renee was like, it wasn't like anything in particular. It's just the way you interact with each other. Edward is so protective of you. He's so intense. And Bella tries to gaslight her and is like, oh, my God, you're totally imagining stuff. And in the background of this conversation, Edward is fighting a gator. (laughs) Yeah, hardcore, too. Um, Renee doesn't let it slide. She's like, Bella, you move differently around him. You guys are like magnets. It's really weird. And, you know, she she just like asks. Like, she's like, nope, I don't think that's it. Girl boss cakey, baby. They arrive home and Charlie's there waiting. He's really happy to see Bella. He's like, welcome home, kid. He's like, I missed you. The food around here sucked when you were gone. I was like, oh. Just kind of cute. You know how yeah. I love Charlie. He's like, oh my god, can you just please call Jacob? He's been calling me nonstop all day. And as he's saying that, the phone rings. And Bella answers it, and it's Jacob. He's happy to hear she's back. But then he gets mad. He's like, why didn't you call me? And Bella's oh. like, I literally just fucking landed. Um, He's like, are you going to school tomorrow? And she's like, yeah. And he goes, okay, bye. Hey, Blue. Bring, bring. Hey. Uh, it's me, Jacob. I'm so happy you're back. Oh, hey. Where the Jake. fuck were you? I literally just got Where back. Where the fuck were you? Uh, I literally just got home. Are you going to be home. at school tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, bye. That was a really good reenactment, babe. I thought so. So, um, <laughs> she starts making dinner for Charlie. I'm going to cut out the part where you explained it. And so, just be us. So, then are you also going to cut out this part? Yes. And what about this part where I explain that the joke that we just did about me saying that we reenacted the call was really good? Yeah. Okay, cool. So she's making dinner because lady stuff. And she starts thinking, why would Jacob uh, ask about school? And she realized that she was gone for three days, which is the amount of time it takes to become a vampire. And Jacob was trying to see if Bella had been changed. Edward hisses when Bella tells him this. And Bella's like, oh, my God, we'll totally have to leave before, like, way before you turn me so we don't break the che- the treaty. Uh, Charlie interrupts as she cooks dinner and they just, like, keep going. But the next day, Edward, in the car, he's like, if I asked you to do something, would you trust me? My answer is, what do you want me to do? I don't trust you. You're Edward and you've broken promises before. Yeah, a thousand percent no. <laughs> Bella's anxious and is like, why? He's like, can you please stay in the car? She won't, he won't tell her why. And then he sees Jacob towering over the other students leaning over a motorcycle. Edward reads his big boy mind. And he said that the reason he called last night and asked about her being at school is because he, meaning Jacob, wanted to talk to Edward. So Jacob is fired up and uh, Bella can tell like her school folks are kind of like inching around. Like, are they going to fucking fight? That would be so Are they going to kiss? I mean, I mean, (laughs) I mean, are they going to kiss? I mean, I mean, fi- I mean kiss. I mean, I mean fight. Kiss, I, mean, I mean, shit. Jacob's like, um, consider this a warning. And Bella's like, what the fuck is going on? And Edward's like, drop it. And Jacob's like, why didn't you tell her? Emmett crossed the boundary line on Saturday night and Paul and him fought. And Bella's like, literally, what the fuck is going on? But during this conversation, Jacob is shaking, taking deep breaths to calm himself. And Edward is like, Bella, please don't be anxious. And Jacob's like, did you tell her anything? Is that why you took her away? And Bella can kind of figure out, like, what is something Edward would hide from her, but Jacob wouldn't. And it all comes to the fact that Victoria was back trying to kill her. Jacob is pissed. He's like, doesn't Bella have the right to know it's her life? She's tougher than she thinks, which is like, okay, yeah, she definitely has the right to know. But also remember this is happening in front of students. Cool. So they're having this weird communication thing in front of students. Jacob starts to think something 
And he's like, okay, bet. And he starts thinking something that's like hurting Edward. Edward's like, stop it. And she, she's like, Jake, what are you doing? Stop. Both of you stop. Jacob's he's thinking like, about his hunky abs and Edward just can't handle the can't image. Handle it. Jacob is like, I see that Edward's overprotective. Are you even allowed to have fun, Bella? But then the principal shows up and separates everybody and they get to class and Edward and her start writing notes to each other. And Bella's like, tell me everything. And Edward says that that vision Alice had was that she saw Victoria coming back. And since the wolves nullified Alice being able to see the future, they didn't really feel comfortable having Bella around during that time. And they argue a lot. And Bella's basically like, you will tell me next time. And she's not bad at him. Bruh. I'm just, I'm fed up with it. <laughs> You're just fed up. I'm just fed up with <laughs> You're it. just fucking mad. Right? And it's only chapter four. Great. I literally... Like, don't keep anything from me, one. Yeah. yeah. No matter what you think it might do to me. Two, fuck off. It's literally Bella's safety. But what if I thought your weak woman mind can handle it? Kind of seems to be the case so far. <sighs> okay. So she's having a be- a bat- she be bop, boo, bop, be dee, be dee, bop, bop. Malu, boo. Chapter four. She's having a bad week. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter four. No one's taking her seriously. Carlisle's like, Bella, chill. Everything's fine. There's seven of us. Like, Alice can keep an eye on Victoria. Like, nobody's taking her seriously at all. And she realizes that everyone on the vampire side just, like, tell her to stop being anxious and to go about her business. Alice has foreseen nothing will happen, so Edward is going to go out hunting. And these are her hardest weeks because she can't survive one single minute without him. Um, She ends up at work early, but they didn't need her, so she gets the day off. And she has no idea what to do and impulsively decides to go she- see Jacob. Because impulsive decisions are the best way to avoid Alice's future telling. Which is like... You know you're in a not good relationship when you have to impulsively decide to see somebody so that your partner doesn't figure it out. Yeah. Just makes me sad. Yeah, sneak. Like a sneaky snake. You shouldn't have to sneak to see people. No. She gets to Jacob's. He's excited to see her. She snuck out. They walk around and Jacob's like, why did they all leave? Like, why did the Collins leave? And she's like, because Edward didn't think it was a good idea for me to be hanging out with vampires. And Jake's like, that is an agreeable point. I agree with that. And she ends up telling him the whole story about leaving. And during this time, um, Jacob is like really fucking mean to Edward. He's like, that filthy bloodsucker, like I hate him, all that kind of crap. Which like for me, that wouldn't like, even if I knew somebody didn't like you, yeah. which nobody does. Because I'm amazing and hunky. Okay, maybe I don't. <laughs> but, like, even if they didn't like you and they said, hey, I don't think you're a good match. And I went, okay, thanks for your opinion. <laughs> like our strings teacher. <laughs> yeah, like our strings teacher. Um, I would still be like, you can't fucking talk shit about my partner to me. Yeah. Like, you just don't do that. It's like you don't talk shit about somebody's siblings or their parents unless they initiated it. Yeah. And then here's Jacob just shitting all over Edward the whole time, which is just so rude. Oh no, that's not cool. <laughs> what? Don't shit on don't shit on him. <laughs> Bella's like, tell me what happened over the weekend. And he says Quill and Emery were out and about doing like wolf stuff. And both groups were chasing Victoria, the vampires and the wolves, and she could figure she like figured out where the line was, so she was jumping back and forth between them. And eventually Emmett kind of went into no man's land and Paul and Emmett got into a fight. Why wouldn't they help each other out to murder a, like, crazy vampire? Because Territory. Did that help? If you have a Deratory, common enemy. Deratory. If you have a common in- enemy, I don't. I think it's, like, chill to help each other out for a minute. Just in the only common enemy that the werewolves have is the white man. You don't leave these silences in there, do you? I cut I cut a little bit of it out. Okay. Sometimes folks will just like sit and stare at each other for like 10 seconds to see who's going to break it first. Yeah. 
Um, Jacob tells Bella that Sam is mad at her because Sam remembers how Bella was when they left her in the woods. He watched her not get better for months. And Sam thought that Bella was the one other person in the world who had the same reason to hate the Cullens that um, he did. But she just, like, forgave them right away. Which, that would piss me off, too. Yeah. And then Jacob starts getting mad at Bella for choosing them and saying, like, like I was saying, like, talking shit about them. Saying things like, are you with him for money? And, like, just being like, well, like, you should be with a human. And she's like, well, then that leaves me with fucking, I guess, Mike Newton, since, like, you're a werewolf. And he's like, I'm still a human. And it's like, you're actually not. You're a werewolf. Yeah. uh, Humans don't usually turn into horses. Or possibly a bear. Or a moose. (laughs) Who knows? Um, But he gets all whiny. He's like, but I'm human. I want you to be with me. And Bella succumbs to Jake's whiny bitch ass love me. I'm human shit. And she's worried about him being in pain. And that's the real reason he's fight. He's like, she's like, the real reason he's being a dick to me is because, like, you should take him to the vet if he's in pain. <laughs> yeah, you should get him some uh, ketamine. <laughs> ketamine. Although they're uh, metazab. No. Metazabibin. What am I thinking? Metabolisms are really fast. So they probably couldn't overdose on cat. Probably not. <laughs> they doing cat all day. Yeah. Um, she says that Jacob had become a part of her and there's no way to change that now. I think Jacob's a bitch. If I'm being honest. Little bitch boy? Yeah. So we're on chapter five. We're actually moving a lot faster than I thought I would. Chapter five. Five? Mm-hmm. God damn. <laughs> Bella asks how Jake is doing because Charlie said that he's having a really hard time. And I also want to mention that during this whole conversation, Bella and Jacob are holding hands. Why? And like I've platonically held hands with people, been there, but, but not like through a conversation. Well, and Jake is platonically, like not platonically into her. He is romantically yeah. into her. He's yeah. made that clear. So this is possibly one way platonic. Yeah, if that honestly. But she start ask. She starts asking how his life is, and how everything's going, and she asks about Quill. She's like, is Quill in the pack? Even though she literally, he literally already said something about Quill being in the pack. Do you yeah, didn't they say Jasper and Quill fought? Emmett and Paul fought, but Paul was with Quill. Mm, okay. Which means Quill was in the pack. So, no, he was just riding. But yeah, Quill's just like fucking vibing and like, like horsing around. Yeah. Um, or a moose. And she, <laughs> or a bear, we'll never know. But. Quill's, like, one of the only ones who's, like, genuinely excited to be in the pack. He finally knows what's going on. And he's really excited. Um, And while the rest of them weren't, like, super excited when they first, when it happened, and, like, they're still not, like, crazy excited, they do like the perks. Yeah. Like turning into a giant fucking wolf whenever you Or moose or bear. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. So, she asked Sam, um... She asks about Sam and Jacob ignores it for a minute. And where am I? Oh, okay. There we go. I was Lou like, what got the lost fuck? In no, her I didn't own get notes. lost. <laughs> I didn't get lost. I just was trying to realize what I said. So Jacob like ignores that question. And out of nowhere, he's like, will he be mad at you? And she's like, yeah. He doesn't like it when I do risky, anything risky. And I wrote here, I was like, isn't driving risky? Yeah, most things are. Isn't literally anything risk. risky? Yeah, being alive is risky. Yeah, but he won't change her. So, Jacob makes a really, really awesome joke about killing Edward. So super cool. Love this joke. Um, <laughs> and Wait, Bella, you didn't laugh. Oh, that's because it's actually not funny at all. Could you laugh though? Ha ha ha! Is that better? Yeah. So Bella's like, are you kidding me? Like, can you at least be civilized? <laughs> at least Edward can be civilized. Like, no, I'm a big wolf. No. Grr. <laughs> she gets up to walk away and he's like, I'm sorry. Like, sit down. I'll tell you about Sam. And I'm like, how about I genuinely apologize for joking about murdering your boyfriend? Yeah. <sighs> Anyways. So Sam's story is that he's obviously had it harder than everyone since he was alone yeah. and was the first one. No one could recognize the signs as his grandfather had already passed. So no one could tell him what the fuck was going on. And it took him two weeks to calm down to change back during his first round. Oof. Sam and Leah Clearwater, 
were dating during this time. They were high school sweethearts. You remember Leah Clearwater is Harry Clearwater's daughter. Yeah. And Harry has since passed away. Yeah. Okay. So Leah and Sam's mother had like rangers looking for him. They were frantic. And when Sam came back, like he just wouldn't talk about it. And everyone was like, he was gone for two weeks. That's crazy weird. Yeah. And again, he had nobody to talk to until one day um, the Quill Atera, the grandfather Quill Atera, came over and shook his hand and was like, holy crap, this guy's running 108 degree fever. I He turned into a werewolf. Yeah. So I As pulled, one does. Yeah. I, I did that every like two or three days. Every two or three days, you you burn your brain. Yeah. Your I, brain turns into scrambled eggs. And then I t- turn into a giant wolf. So this old man Quill is Jacob's grand uncle. I had to look up a fam like a family tree to figure out like where a second cousin was in it. Um doesn't matter. Um during this time in the book, <laughs> Jacob brings like he's like, What do you how do you think Quill could tell? And he brings his hand to Bella's face and like holds it there, like both of them, so she can feel how hot he is. And this clearly makes Bella uncomfortable, so she like pulls her hand away and like they just keep holding hands. And I'm like, stop touching. They were holding hands the entire time. He she knows how hot his hands are yeah. hands are. So uh Old man Quilatera, Billy and Harry had actually seen their grandfathers changed, changing. They're yeah. So I was like, Dunna. but they end up meeting with Sam and they tell him everything. And Sam's like, oh, thank God, I'm not going insane. Yeah, I didn't just trip acid for the last Literally. two weeks. But nobody in the uh, tribe was old enough, so they have to be like a certain general age, like kind of puberty age. Yeah. Um, to change, so he just waited. And Jake's makes more derogatory comments about the Cullens, and Bella tells him to grow up. But this leads to a conversation about how he is not aging. He, It's one of the things about being a werewolf is he doesn't age. And Bella gets mad, makes this all about herself. She's like, you're not aging, so I'm the only one aging. Where's the justice? And I'm like, or, hey, Jake, I know you didn't ask to become something that didn't age. Like, he's going to be stuck at the mental age of 16 in the body of a 25-year-old, where yeah. he grew from 5'10", the body of a 16-year-old, to 6'7", yeah. in the body of a 25-year-old. Also, 5'10", already, is pretty, pretty big. pretty tall. It's pretty big. Yeah. And he wasn't like a skinny, scrawny little 5'10". He was a pretty big boy. Yeah. So, now he's 6'7", in the span of a year. Nobody else knows what's going on, so Jake just grew this big. And can you imagine, like, the f- he's probably being made fun of. Yeah. And he doesn't grow. That's it. He's done. And Bella's like, but but I want to stop aging. And Jake's like, well, I didn't. Yeah. So now I'm stuck. I didn't want to turn into a wolf and fight werewolves. No, <laughs> or, fight vampires. Yeah, fight vampires the rest of my life. But Bella's like, but what about me? So that pissed me off. Um, He does say that there's a possibility he could continue to grow once he gets enough control to quit phasing into a werewolf for a solid length of time. And apparently it's really hard. Uh, They start talking about Sam again. And Sam wasn't able to tell Leah what was going on. And they started arguing about where he was in the night and what was going on. But they were trying to continue to be together. Do you know what would help him quit phasing, though? (laughs) What? Therapy. That's true. Did you try not? Did you try therapy and talking about your anger issues? Mm, that probably could have worked. Right. Um, but one day, Leah's cousin, Emily Young, came down from the Maka, tri- Maka Reservation, which is like north of the Quileute tribe. Is this another real tribe? I believe it is. Because that'd be great. That'd be a great thing to do. Let's bring another tribe into this. It is, yeah. Oops. It's it's up there. So, um, when Emily came down, Sam imprinted on her. And Justin, what is imprinting in regular biology? I don't think it's a thing in a real biology. Well, one sec. It is. Clickety, clickety, clack. Well, I wanted to get it right. It's basically just when a little, young, tiny animal 
fixes its attention onto the first object that it has visuals with. Oh, so like ducklings. Yeah, imprinting like, on their mom. Like, oh, you're my mom. I'm following you around literally forever. Yeah, so it's not what Jacob's about to say. Well, I guess kind of. But basically, um, Sam imprints on Emily Young. And imprinting is very we- weird and rare. Um But it's like soulmates like that is your soulmate now. So imprinting isn't like about like a baby being able to stay alive. It's I love you now. I'm boned up, baby. Um, But this was really uncomfortable because Sam loved Leah, but it didn't matter because he and Emily were soulmates. So Sam hated the vampires for changing him because he had to break Leah's heart. Yeah. Which makes sense. That I mean, he still loved Leah, but there's like, based on the lore, there's nothing he could have done. Yeah. So since Emma and Leah were so close, Bella's like, yo, how the fuck was Emily like chill with falling in love with Sam when Emily and uh, Leah were BFFs? And apparently at first, Emily was really angry. And Jacob said, it's hard to resist that level of commitment and adoration. It's not, though. It's kind of creepy when you don't know someone. Yeah. Um, Like, it's kind of super creepy if you don't know them. Yeah. Like, I don't know, a stalker. Mm Mm-hmm. And Sam could finally tell her everything after they officially got together. And then Sam ended up hurting her and scarring her face. And when he was beating himself up after that, she ended up comforting him and the rest was history. Okay. Mm, I'm sorry. You rip my face open, probably not going to be tight with you afterwards. Yeah. Just like in general. At least going to take a couple days. (laughs) Yeah. So Jake has not yet imprinted. And the only other person in the pack besides Sam that has is Jared. And Jared imprinted on a girl he sat next to in school for a year. And then one day he... F to your name. What? Jared. Jared and Kim. Oh. Don't be mean about people's That's names. That's crazy that that is the whitest couple name I've ever heard. Yeah. It's not like Embry or Quill. Yeah. They're like, I don't know, Jared and Paul? Who gives a shit about those other two wolves? Just name them after the Mormon Bible people. <laughs> That's basically what she did. I don't know anything about Bible. Bible. Um, So they talk a little bit more and um, they kind of talk about how it's weird because Jacob knows all this and a little bit more intimately because he can read their minds when they're wolves. He's like, I don't want to know all this. It makes me kind of uncomfortable, actually. He's like, you must understand because like your bloodsucker can read your mind. And she's like, no, they can't read my mind. Um, But. Anyways, they stop talking and they just vibe for a bit. My mind's too buff. My mind's really fucking swole. Yeah, it just punches their mind when they try. Um, They just hang in the sun, enjoying each other. And Bella, they're both like, we miss the old time, old times. And this is, and Bella's like, oh shit, you have to tell me what you tortured uh, Edward with the other day in your mind. And he was like, oh, I was just thinking about how, um, how you looked when Edward was gone, how you looked like dead and empty and the physical picture of you when Sam found you in the woods. Cause that is haunting Sam still. Yeah. And she's like, he's like, I used all that stuff to hurt Edward. So he would know. And I'm like, honestly, yeah, go for it. In that yeah. case, like, Hey dude, this is all your fault. Literally. Like I get it at that point. Yeah. I don't love it still, but I get it. Yeah. She gets mad and he apologizes um, because how many times does that happen? And she has to go. She has to go help Angela with her graduation cards. And he spent a lot of time in this visit, like insulting Edward, which would which would piss me off, too. I don't care how much I personally hate Edward. If somebody and honestly with you, if somebody like complained about the same thing I complained about, I'd be like, what the fuck did you just say about my husband? Yeah. Bitch. What'd you say about his snoring? He scared the cat. (laughs) Justin just squared up and one of our cats got scared and jumped off the ground. And then he tried to play it off. He tried to play it off by being like, oh, I was just licking my belly. Yeah. I wasn't jumping. Um, But what'd you say about my husband snoring? (laughs) Actually, maybe that one I'd be fine with. Oh, okay. No comment. Um, But she decides she doesn't care who anybody is what anybody is. She is neutral ground. Jacob is her friend. 
Edward is her boyfriend and that is that. And then she promises to come back soon. Hey, super not. Super not how that works. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can't just be like, "Mm, actually, this is how things are going to go. And everybody's going to be cool with it. Everybody's going to be cool with it. Everyone can shush. So I think we're only going to get through one more. Holy shit. What? I wrote 6,000 words for this. Jesus Christ, Blue. We're going to go to chapter six. So we're going to go a little over an hour. So Bella is headed home. She's feeling a lot like physically lighter after having spoken to Jacob. But as she's driving down the road, Justin, you'll never guess what the sun glints off behind her. It's the sexy silver Volvo, Mm. and it's on her tail following incredibly closely. God damn, that's not dangerous. (laughs) Well, it's Edward. He can't crash. Um... He can't read her mind, and that's what he uses to not crash. I'm proud of you, baby. Proud that you remember all that. So he definitely can crash. No comment. So she decides, she's like, oh, shit. Like, he's going to be so angry. Like, I need somebody around to buffer him so he doesn't get mad to me. Jesus Christ. So from chapter six on, let's just have, like, a domestic, uncomfortable relationship warning. Uh, It doesn't get violent until we talk about Rosalie. But when it comes to Edward and Bella, we'll just have a um. Uh, well, with with Edward's history, definitely mentally abusive. Yeah, we're just gonna have an abusive, abusive relationship trigger. Um, anytime we talk about Edward yeah. and Bella, I think from this point forward in the book. Yeah. Um. Obviously, it'll be in the uh, show notes, but still, um, just gonna put that there. Yeah. So she pulls into Angela's house. So she pulls into Angelo's house. Ha- Angelo. Who's Angelo? Angela, and the Volvo follows her until she gets there. She gets there, Ben's on his way out, and Angela's really excited to see Bella. She's like, thank you for helping with these graduation announcements. They start, and Angela's like, how's Edward? She's Angela's really perceptive, just yeah. like Bella's mom, and uh, she can tell some things up. She's like, Bella, you seem kind of anxious. Do you want to talk about it? Would her vampire power be to read people's minds? Uh, she's an empath. <laughs> um, Edward the empath. Edward the empath. Angela can tell that Bella doesn't totally want to talk, so she like she drops it. She's like, oh, we don't have to talk about it if you don't want. You what know. a cool dude. She seems pretty chill. Yeah. But then Bella's like, you know what? I do kind of want to talk about it. I'm kind of anxious about Edward. He's mad at me. And he's mad about at me because of Jacob Black. Like, it's really weird. I think he's like, Jacob Black is a bad influence, blah, blah, blah. And Angela's like, oh, okay, he's jealous. Bella's like, no... Because of the bad influence thing. And Angela's like, yeah, sure. I'm pretty comfortable Jacob's in love with you. I'm pretty sure I've seen him stare at you. It makes me really uncomfy. Does Jacob um, go to the same school as him? No, he goes to school on the reservation. Okay. Um, But Angela's like, I feel really comfortable. The problem's jealousy. Yeah. But I was like, no, I don't think that's what's going on. Like, Jacob and I are just friends. And Angela's like, yeah, maybe you're just friends with him. But I don't feel like Jacob feels that way. And then, you know. I agree with Angela at this point. Angela's like, okay, like, I mean, not understanding the werewolf thing, but, like, still kind of being like, "Mm, even if the werewolf thing is there, I'm pretty sure he's, you did just hold his hand for four straight hours. social interaction. Also, how sweaty would that be? Oh, my God. With his super heat, too? Yeah, literally. Bruh, that's a wet handhold. Yeah. Um, They talk about college, bad bed. Ben comes home and she heads out. Where did the bed go? Bed go. And uh, she talks to Charlie and then she goes into her room and Edward is there. He's pissed. Yeah. And he growls at her. And she's like, hey, it's no problem. I'm alive. No harm, no foul. And he's like, do you know how close I came to crossing the line? Also, do you remember that TikTok we watched? Yeah, the growling one. Yeah. We should post that It's somewhere. provocative. <laughs> it's gross. It is, but I like it. It's sexier when you read that somebody growls. It's not it's not sexy if when you somebody... think about it for 2 seconds. Well, you don't think about it when you read. Yeah, blue. You're like, "Wow, I can't believe Edward just growled. He's so protective of Bella." And then now I'm like, "Oh, he's disgusting." But that growl though. 
I don't see how someone could sensually growl. Hey. If you can sensually growl. If you can sensually growl, send us a note. Send us a send us a send little us a, video, a video of you. Of you sensually growling. Um, but not like in a horny way. Yeah. Like, we'll do a YouTube video. If, if enough people send it in, we'll do a YouTube video of ranking your sensual growls. <laughs> We should do a growl. Every time we say growl on the podcast, we should have a timer. And then, like, we do a bonus episode one time, and we just listen to when we say growl. So it's just growl, 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 growl. Well, like, like the sentences. Okay. You're no fun. Anyway, well, I didn't know what you were saying. God, Justin, read my mind. Why aren't you Edward Cullen? Jesus. If I was Edward Cullen, you would be Bella, and I couldn't read your mind. Fuck! <laughs> You just logic me, man. <laughs> Who's okay. Jacob? Stinky? My baby boy, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he doesn't let us hang out. <laughs> yeah, true. Our cat Stinky gets so mad. I was hanging out with Justin uh, the other night, and Stinky came up, and he was like, and now you lay on your back, and I get onto your belly. And I lay here, and you do not move. Stinky's a cat, by the way. And I was like, no, I refuse to turn, and... He got so mad. He started, started biting me. Biting the shit he out of her. He started biting my arm to try to get me to turn on my back. So Ugh. I guess he would be he would be Jacob and uh, Bruno's Paul and <laughs> Weaves Jared. Okay. <laughs> okay. We got to finish this chapter. So wait, we should go into chapter seven because chapter seven has a anyway. Okay. He's like, do you know how close I came to crossing the line? And she's like, Bella's like, how dare you even consider that? And gets mad at him. Good. And she cuts Get him off. Get mad at him sometimes. Oh, he doesn't. She doesn't. And she actually cuts him off from his rambling and his aggression. And he's like, you, she's like, you don't have to worry about Jake. His teeth are all grinding up. His Jake from State Farm? <laughs> Jake from State Farm, yeah. His hands are balled up and he's like physically far away from her. So she gets like closer to him and she's like, I'm sorry for making you anxious. And then um, she realizes he didn't even go to hunt, which pisses her off because now he has to go away again and she can't survive without him. Doi. And he's like, that's okay because this won't happen again. How could I, How c- I'm not going to let this happen again. And she's like, okay, well, I'm going to go. And neither of them are willing to negotiate. And so she's like, are you jealous? And he's like, no, I'm not jealous. I would argue that he is. Yeah, because it's obvious that he is. That he is. So Bella goes, I'm neutral country. I'm Switzerland. Nope. I will not be affected by your stupid territorial disputes. Not and how it, things work. This is the quote. You are, well, not exactly the love of my life, because I expect to love you for much longer than that. The love of my existence. And I'm like, Bleh. yeah, vamo, vamo country right there, dog. <laughs> So then the next Friday, the boys are planning, the boy vampires are planning on going hunting in a reservation in North Carol- North California that has a mountain lion problem. And I That's wrote, cool, at least. Well, I wrote, as if <laughs> they were listed as threatened in California as of 2019, but have been listed on the endangered species list since 73. Oh, but this is a different universe. Where... Where vampires eat Vamp- most of them, where, so where, they should still where be. Where vampires exist, werewolves exist, and mountain li- lions run rampant. Oh, okay. Um, so <laughs> Bella- Th- those are the two, three mythical things. <laughs> those are the three things that are happening. <laughs> um, Bella gives Jake a call. She's like, "Hey, Edward's heading out. I can come over Saturday." Um, and then she's like, "If Edward breaks my car again, I'll just have Jacob come get me." Plain and simple. Or take the motorcycle. Broom, broom. Broom, broom. But on Thursday, instead of Edward waiting in her Volvo, it's Alice. In her Volvo? She got a Volvo? No, uh, it's Edward's Volvo. Oh. Apparently, the boys left early, and Alice and her are having a slumber party. But basically what this is, is Alice is kidnapping her for the weekend. Makes sense. Because Esme has cleared it with Charlie. Again, all of this without Bella's consent. And then Alice will be driving her to and from work. And school until Saturday, and they'll be Bella will be staying with the Collins again without consent. Bella's grinding her teeth, she's mad. Alice, does she Alice, growl? Damn it, no, she doesn't. <laughs> Alice apologizes and said he paid her off because he bought the yellow Porsche. So, literally, paid her off, literally, because 
Bella is kind of like, this seems like pretty controlling. No. Uh, what are we going to do about that? Like this car is kind of crazy for two days of Edward being gone. And Alice is like, mm, and Bella's like, you're fucking kidding me. He's doing this to pay you, pay you off for every single time he's gone. Also, doesn't she make the money? The, yeah, but I think it's more of a communal fund, honestly. What? They're comrades? Yeah, I think they are. Um, Bella's like, doesn't this seem pretty overly controlling? And Alice is like, no, young werewolves can be crazy dangerous. But she ends and up having an stupid okay... stupid hot. I mean, what'd you say? stupid sexy. Oh. Um... And she has a good night with the lady vampires. They get Italian and watch movies. And Rose is even there, but like in the background. The lady pyres. The lady pyres. And then it's time for bed. And she's like, where the fuck am I going to sleep? Do you want me to sleep on the couch? And they're like, no. Um, we have a coffin all set up for you. <laughs> Alice already got all of her stuff from Charlie's. And Bella's like, well, I'm calling Jake. She calls Jake. She's like, I can't come over. I need a new... Uh, plan for my motorcycle <laughs> a new plan what it's jake from state farm you don't make sense to me he's get getting it. a new get now, he's yeah. get, she's getting a new insurance plan from jake from i get it ruined my joke <laughs> ruined it no babe i found it really funny people are gonna be like justin that was the best joke in the whole wide world like you're so hunky um and you're just you just hated it huh so maybe i'm the hostage did I hurt your feel wings? Okay, suffer. Um, <laughs> she tells him that she's being held hostage at the Cullens, and he's like, "I'll come get her." Like, all seriously, he's like, "We will come get you." That's not funny. She's like, "No, like, uh, no, it's okay." She quickly goes back to mad mode when Alice takes her up to Edward's room, and there's this fucking colossal king size bed that takes up the whole room, and it's so over the top it makes Bella uncomfortable and even more mad. Which, I w it would make me mad, too. Yeah. Alice leaves Bella, and Bella decides to angrily sleep on the couch, which I would, <laughs> I would too. I would stubbornly sleep on the couch. Petty bed sleep. <laughs> yeah, instead of the big, stupid bed. And the door opens, and it ends up being Rosalie, who asks if she can come in. And, Justin, I know we're getting close to time, but I really think we should finish Chapter 7, because there's... It's not something I want to start the next episode up with. I don't. We need to stop. We're at way That's past with the time. edits, but I'm, I'm not comfortable starting the next episode with this information. Because it, it's bummo mode? It's bummo mode, and it has a pretty big trigger that I feel like I need to trigger, and I don't want to trigger right at the beginning of the episode. But it's so long, too. Just let me... We'll be fine. I have to, Justin. Okay, so if you want to duck out now, we're going to hear Rosalie's story now. It's kind of majority of what chapter seven's about, and it does include a gang rape. So trigger warning on that. Um, feel free to leave now. You won't hurt our feelings, and you actually honestly don't miss that much plot. <laughs> um, and I'll I'll recap without that trigger information in the next episode. You ready to start chapter seven? Let's speed through. I'll make it quick. Bella's confused. She doesn't understand. Rose does not talk to her. And also, I can't make any jokes right now, so... Well, you can leave because of that, because there's going to be no funny Justins. <laughs> there's some stuff that I want you to joke about with me. Oh, no. <laughs> um, she, Rose is like, I want to tell you why I think you should stay human and why I would have stayed human if I were you. And Bella's like, the only reason she knows Rose became a vampire was because it was close to what happened to Bella in Port Angeles that one time. Do you remember what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? So, but there was nobody there to save Rose. And Rose is a little bitter that that's all Bella knows. And she's like, I want to tell you about my life. Is it because Edward doesn't tell her literally anything? Well, yes, but also because Edward's not comfortable sharing a lot about other people's experiences because he can read their minds and experience that with them. Mm -hmm. So he can share a lot more of what he knows mm -hmm. than what they might be comfortable with sharing. Okay. Which is honestly, I get that. Yeah. But also, yeah, he doesn't share shit with Bella. 1933, she was 18. She was beautiful and her life was perfect. Middle class. Dad worked for a bank. In the middle of a war. They weren't in the war yet. Um, in the middle of the Depression. They were born wealthy and she took everything for granted. The Great Depression didn't exist for her. And she acknowledges her privilege during this time. 
She said her mother kept the house, kept her two younger brothers in spotless order, but her parents wanted to climb the social ladder. She was beautiful, she was young, and she was satisfied and content with her life. She was happy that she was Rosalie Hale. She was somebody, and this is gross, so just ick here, somebody that men watched since she was 12, people watched her. Yikers. Everybody was envious of her. Her mother was proud of her, and she knew exactly what she wanted out of life. A huge wedding, a beautiful man, beautiful children, and she wanted to be loved and adored. And she's like, I know how silly and shallow this was, but I loved my life. I was, I was, I loved my life. I was ready to become a housewife at 18. She's like, Bella's like, I can't imagine that. And I'm like, Bella, you're literally choosing to become you're a fucking it, yeah, vampire. The same thing. Like, you might not be a housewife, but like, come on, girl. Rose continues to say that there was this very powerful and influential family man or family that owned the bank her dad worked at. And here's something you can make jokes about because his name was Royce King the Second. What a dumb fucking name. Yeah. Honestly. Um, Royce sent her roses every single night of their courtship. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Royce? F to your name. Thanks, baby. He was handsome, and he had light blonde hair and pale eyes. And I wrote in my notes, never trust a man with blonde hair. Sorry. Mm. It's true. They're Mm. all bad. They're all bad, every single one of them. We're going to do hair racism. (laughs) Hair racism. Her parents were overjoyed that they were getting along together, and they were engaged after two months, even though they almost never spent time alone together. Royce just... Yeah, Royce just liked to show her off, and he was probably 10 or 15 years older than her. Gross. The wedding was planned, and she never even felt jealous anymore. She had a friend she kind of felt jealous of, but she wasn't. And she was like, I'll have fair-haired children, and I'll be at the king's massive estate. Ruh-ro. And we're going to trigger again here. Feel free to ho- feel free to hop out. Trigger warning for rape. She left her friends one night. It was dark in the streets, cold for April. And instead of being scared and hurrying, she was being vain about the weather. She's like, I don't remember much, but I remember being worried that the weather was a little cold and we wanted an outside wedding and I didn't want to have to shift everything to inside. (laughs) I was like, oh, Mm. so it's we're here. She was getting very close to her house when she heard a group of men. They were drunk. And she she remembers wishing that she had called her dad to escort her home. It was Royce and a gang of his friends, but instead of being safe, he said that he had waited for her to come through. He was drunk, and he had a new friend in this little gang, and he wanted to show her off to him. They end up gang raping her and leaving her in the streets thinking she was dead. The men were teasing Royce that he would have to have find a new bride, and Royce retorted that he would have to learn patience first. This is a kid's book. Yeah, what's the age? age uh... Nine to 13. Again, they don't use the R word, but I'm an adult, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, because I don't think that's something that should be sugarcoated. No, you can't... You can't sugarcoat something like yeah, that. Yeah, you can't put that in a book and then... Just skim past it. Yeah. It's the same thing with the well, worse, but the same thing with the poverty. You can't just put like blatant racial yeah. poverty in a book without being like, hey, this is the reason they're poor. Yeah, some explanation of this it. This is the reason that they're living like this. Yeah. So that made me sick, too, is them, like, joking afterwards. Again, they thought she was dead. Yeah. And he was like, oh, well, I'll just have to find a new bride. After I beat the shit out of the one. Beat and he was waiting death. there. Yeah. yeah, he was waiting there for her. It was premeditated. Oh, my God. Did she get a murder of them? <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. So... As she's in pain, wondering why death was taking so long, she's like, just fucking kill me. Carlisle comes along and changes her, and she's irritated that he's trying to save her life because she wanted to die. And she never hey, liked the Cullen family. After that happening? I would want to as makes well. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I, I understand where she's at, especially because when she comes out of her vampire metamorphosis, it's only been three days since this traumatic event. Yeah. So... 
She's begging them to kill her during this, and Edward wanted to. He was Edward was actually mad that Carlisle had chosen such like a high value person because she was known around the town. So they'd have to move. She was somebody everyone will recognize. She was engaged to Royce, whatever Royce King. Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce on the Beamer. When she changed, she's like, I hate to admit it. I was still really shallow because I was really happy to see that I was still super beautiful. (laughs) She's like, but I wish I had been more ugly because I started to blame my good looks for what had happened to me instead of, you know, the men who did that to her Mm. being complete trash people. That's a a society driven thing. It's like, this happened to you because you were pretty. Like, Mm -hmm. that's not something you come to your own conclusions with. Yeah, and with. she knows now, like, she's yeah. not dumb, but, I mean, it was 1933. That which is just horrible he wouldn't that. Have, he wouldn't have gotten anything for that. Yeah. Even nowadays, it would be. Hit or miss, yeah. Hit or miss, Especially completely. if he was fucking rich as hell. Mm-hmm. So, Rose turns and smiles at Bella. We're kind of transitioning to the next part in the story, and she goes, My record's pretty good. Almost as clean as Carlisle. Better than Esme and Edward. I've never tasted human blood. But I have murdered seven humans. And I'm like, I just put my fucking fist through them. Well, she didn't spill any of their blood. Mm. Which I'm kind of like, okay, you must have really hurt them. That's nice. Because she killed all of the men who beat beat her and gang raped her. And she saved Royce for last. Because she was hoping his friends being murdered would scare the shit out of him. And it did. Good. She was theatrical about it. She wore a wedding dress to murder him. Ooh. And he was, like, in a room, like, with guards and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Like, he was scared shitless. This is, um, this would be, like, a fun Sherlock Holmes <laughs> episode mm-hmm. where she's yeah. the bad guy for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Even though she wouldn't be the bad guy. Um... So she goes, that's my story. And I want to tell you the reason that I don't like you was because I was mad when you came around and Edward wanted you, not me. And Bella's like, but you have Emmett. And she's like, no, I never wanted Edward that way. But I always want people to want me. Cool. She's still a little vain, but obviously she's taken time to reflect. She knows and acknowledges this, but that doesn't make the feelings go away. That'd be cool if she had like siren like power yeah. Or she was that like, would be cool. man control. Yeah. She doesn't, unfortunately. She has no ability, but I think that would be a really fun yeah. one. Um, Rose is like, the reason now I'm not the biggest fan of you is because you have everything. <sighs> she used it to make them kill themselves. Ooh, that would have been nice. Yeah. I'm glad she saved Rose Yo, for Steph. last. <laughs> Yo, Yo, Steph, Steph, rewrite this shit. Rewrite. She, Stephanie wrote a gender bent version of events where like, Everybody's a, the opposite gender, and I'm like, why? Yeah. Anyways. I don't think that does anything for stories, really. No, because if you're writing a story where the gender is it's a that big important. part of yeah. the... Yeah, I'm like, oh, well. So, Rose is like, you have everything that I want, and I think you're choosing wrong. You have everything that I wanted, my life, everything, and you're making the wrong choice. And Rose is like, well, at least I got my happy ending. Like, half of it, at least. I got Emmett. I love him a lot. She's He's the exact partner I needed. And she gives Bella the, you're too young to make these choices. You don't know what you want to do in blank amount of years. Well, yeah, I'm not 100 years old. Yeah. And then she apologizes to Bella for being mean to her. And she's like, I'll try to be better in the future, which That's awesome. That's what you can do. What you can do, really. Yeah. And the next morning, Bella wakes, so we're done with Rose's story. Um, so, asterisk here, funnies can come back. <laughs> it's going to take a minute to <laughs> get that tone back. I only have back. another paragraph. But uh, she's st- Bella's still mad at uh, Alice. She goes to school, and before her second class, a motorcycle screeches into her school with none other than Jacob Black there to kidnap her away from Alice because of those snap decisions. Cool, cool. And Alice can't read the werewolves anything. Is the school, like... In no man's land? Why can he come? It, why it, can it, both Forks is kind of the no man's land. Okay. So, yes, he can come into Forks. Okay. Um, the Cullens live outside of the city in the woods. Mm. So if they go on that side of the for- that side of Forks? Yeah, it okay. would be the territory breaking. Um, Bella goes with him and is very glad to be free. And that's how we end chapter seven. 
which was not as long as I thought it would be. Good. <sighs> you ready to... De- we'll have to decompress yeah. heavily after that. Yeah, good job sticking through that if you are still here. Yeah, thank you. I know. It's a kid's book. I wanted to get... Like, not go for it, but I had to. Like, yeah. I couldn't just ignore it. Yeah. It's part of the book. Yes. It's and just a little rough. It's rough for us, and we're adults. Yeah, and I, I've read the books, and I've seen the movies multiple times, but it, it is harder to say things out loud, because... You don't have to think of it that way, really. Especially as a reader, I've always been able to... Like I've said, if I didn't want to read something in the book, I went over it. If I didn't want to think about something in the book, I didn't. Yeah. And now I'm doing that. And there are parts of these books, the saga, I love. Yeah. And there are parts that I just really don't like. (sighs) You ready to be done? Um, Should we put some women battered women's information better i do now have the um suicide hotline and the crisis text line okay and the crisis text line can help with that stuff okay so yeah if you're experiencing uh partner abuse any Mm -hmm. any spousal abuse domestic abuse abuse is the word um physical emotional uh emotional social financial anything Definitely reach out. Def, uh, crisis text line might be not, not might not be able to help you directly, but definitely will have information for you yeah. that we would that we might have worse information. Yeah, so. they can provide a lot of on the spot help um, with calming down and finding a next step, and that's yeah. texting seven four one seven four one. Just text home to that number. Okay. Um, kind of feels gross to do a plug, so I won't. Yeah. <laughs> Glad I did that at the beginning. Thank you folks so much for hopping in with us. Uh, that's all of Rosalie's story, so we don't really hop back on that. Yes. Um, now you see why I didn't want to start the next yeah. one. Um, yeah. We'll bring back some funnies mm-hmm. next time around. Um, yeah. on, thir- on next, next Tuesday, Tuesday, we're not doing Thursday. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening to Reading Held Hostage. My name's Blue and I love to read. And my name's Justin and I hate to read. We'll see you folks next week. Harvard Girls! I want to see men!